Hi everyone and welcome to episode 4 in our Shopkeeper NPC series. In the last episode we got our UI to work for our NPC. So when we go near it, it generates the UI and allows us to work with our UI. In this episode we're going to start working on the inventory of our Shopkeeper and populating that shop with their inventory. So first things first, I've actually already imported in some icons for our test items. So let's add those to our item data table. So I click on Apple here and I can choose the Apple texture. Back for the gunpowder. And for the pumpkin. So now our items now have thumbnails. So to get that working inside our game, we need to tell our shopkeeper UI uh, slots to use that thumbnail. So go into your shopkeeper item UI, click on what will be the image for your thumbnail. Then go to the right hand side and you'll see brush and bind. Change bind to item details thumbnail and click compile. So now that'll be bound to the item in our UI. Click play. And you see the apple is now populating the thumbnail for each of these items. Now the thumbnails you saw were quite small. So what we do is go into our shopkeep item UI, click on the thumbnail. I'm going to change image size here to 60 by 60 because that's the size of my pictures and then I'm going to change the alignment over here to fill both vertically and horizontally. So now when I push play, I go into my game, then I'll fill the whole entire slot. But obviously this guy's going to sell more than just apples. So let's go and create the inventory for this guy. So open up your shopkeep NPC actor, create a new variable and this would be called inventory. This will be a variable type integer and what this is going to be is an array of item IDs. So change it to an array by clicking on the little pill icon and making it an array. We want to make it editable, so click on editable and click compile. So now we go back into our game, we can click on our shopkeeper NPC and on the right hand side details panel you'll see inventory and we can add inventory to this guy. So I'm going to give him a barrel and then a a uh, pumpkin. So these numbers refer to the item IDs found in our item data table. So now we have to get these and fed them into our UI. So in our shopkeeper UI, we need to add a variable to this. And the variable we're going to add is the NPC that we need to use. So I'm going to call this one shopkeeper NPC, and it's going to be of the type shopkeeper NPC which should be a reference and then you want to make the editable and exposed on spawn and click compile. We'll close that for now, we'll come back to it in a minute and let's go into our shopkeeper NPC and find where you've got the spawning of the UI widget for the shopkeeper. Now if you change this back to none and then choose your Shopkeeper UI again, you'll see a, 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 an option for your NPC. So from there, we can just drag in a self reference. So it'll tell that UI that this actor is the NPC to show the inventory for. So now we've got that linked to our UI, we can go into our Shopkeeper UI and take a look at how we're constructing those grids. So the grid here is generating a slot with item ID 1. We need to change that obviously this to match our inventory of our shopkeeper NPC. So let's create a function. So go new function and let's call this fetch item. On fetch item, we're going to drag a reference to our shopkeeper NPC and choose get. And then from there, we can get the inventory variable. And this array, we want to check whether or not it holds a certain index. So we go type in valid and you'll see is valid index pops up. Now the index we need to hear, we need to plug in from our for loop in the event graph. So we need to make an input on our fetch item. So select the main node and go down to the details panel and choose new input. This will be called index and will be an integer. This will need to be plugged into your is valid index. Uh, let's just move that down now. There you go. So 
this outputs a true or false value. So let's put it into a branch. So if it is valid, we want to output what item ID it is. So from your inventory, get a copy and the index will go into that get. This will now output our item ID. So let's put an output for our function. Click on the function start and go down to the details panel and see outputs. Create new output for item ID. This will be plugged into true and the item ID will come from our get. We need another return node though for our false. And if false, we want that to be negative one. We'll come back to reasons why in a second. Let's click compile. So now we're going to put it into our main construct. So drag your fetch item at the start of your for loop, connecting it to the loop body and then the create widget. The index will come from the for loop and the item ID will go into item ID. And that's all there is to it. Click compile and we're done here. Next, we want to go into our shopkeeper item UI. And what we want to do is tell this thing to render differently based on whether or not our item ID is equal to minus one or not. If it is, we want it, if it's not so, if it, sorry, if it is equal to minus one, we want it to not show any item in it and not be clickable or anything like that. So let's make that the case. So at the start of the construct, we're going to get the item ID out and we're going to check whether or not it is greater than or equal to zero. This will go into a branch. and then into true there. So if it's true, it'll carry on as normal. However, if it is false, I want this to change differently. I want this to be the case for our um, button to hide all of its details and be an empty slot, basically. So we need to change a few things about it. First of all, I need to change the way the button's going to react. Next, I want to change the text and the images to be nothing. and basically be an empty shell. So if I go to my graph, and let's work on this bit by bit. So first thing we do, let's hide all that text. So we're going to go and drag our text values in. Uh, cost. And we're going to set the text for this to nothing. leaving the in text blank. That'll make the text disappear. Next, we want to make sure the image is set to nothing as well. So go drag your image out and get, and we'll just make sure that it is set to absolutely nothing. So set brush, or set visibility rather, and we'll change that to hidden. And plug that in like so. Click compile. Let's test that out and see how we're looking. So there we see the two items he has, and here we see the other slots. Now they're still clickable, so what we need to do is make it so that he can't click on them. So let's exit the shop, and go back to our shopkeep item UI. Now in here you'll see the button is a separate entity. So what we can do is we make that button disappear. So drag your button out, and instead of making the image disappear, we'll make the button disappear. So changing that to hidden. Click compile and close. Now when I push play, I've got my two buttons here, but nothing else appearing. And that's it. And that's how we get our item UI to show. Thanks very much for watching. If you have any questions or concerns or comments you want to add, comment below the video and don't forget to subscribe to the channel for future videos. In the next part, we're then going to take on the uh, chance of removing our money when we purchase these items and adding these items to our players inventory thanks very much for watching and i'll see you all next time bye bye